We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Jennifer Toledo. And so, Jennifer, you're in the middle of nowhere in Africa. Uh, you're dying and you're breaking a covenant that's been thousands of years with Satan that, that has stopped people from coming to know God in that particular region. Uh, you're dying, but you, per you, you proceed. They break the covenant by forming a stronger covenant, the covenant with God through Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, and what changes occurred after that covenant was broken in that region? Yes, it was absolutely incredible. Um, we actually did this at the peak of the drought, the m middle of the summer. It's like 110 to 120 degrees. It was so hot and um, just, you know, just the conditions in that land were so horrific. And we said, not only are the people going to come into covenants, but we're going to call the land into covenants. And so to symbolize this, we all, we took communion, we poured communion on the land and, and we said, okay, you know, we did everything God told us to do. It was very simple. Um, and they said, God, we, we really need two signs. Would you just let us know you're pleased, sign your name to this deal, something. And two, would you give us a sign that you've really brought down the demonic stronghold in this land? And um, sure enough, we got our signs. It was like living through a Bible story. It was so incredible. Tell me, tell me, you had several signs. Tell me one of yeah. them. Yeah, one of them was um, it all of a sudden, middle of the summer, he the heavens literally open and it starts to pour down rain. Never happens. Oh my goodness, it hadn't rained in so long. That, I mean, you don't have to tell an African that rain means God's pleased. You know, I mean, they were, they knew God was in this. And then it began to, this bolt of lightning struck this mountain, Goat Mountain. And that was the high point of all the demonic power. It was where they did all these sacrifices and God struck the mountain and, and you could feel something shift in the land. And then it was almost instantly we began to see, see things um, change. We had um, some friends that, that were from the Turkana tribe and um, they had a curse put on them that all of their children would die at birth. And just so happened she was three weeks overdue from delivering a, another baby. And um, they had lost several babies, and so they were just devastated. But as soon as we did everything God told us to do, and the curse was broken, um, she went into labor. And everybody kind of stood by to see if you know this was gonna really bring change. And sure enough, she delivered a perfectly healthy baby girl. Her, and they, uh, the, the father held the baby up in front of the tribe and said, her name is Peace. She'll have no middle name, no last name. Her name is Peace. And she'll be a prophetic sign to us that on this day we came into peace with the living God. And then from that moment, like we just saw a crazy transformation in the land. It began to rain, record rainfalls. Um, the violence level completely diminished. Um, it was people started getting saved. It was like you just know, an I open love, heaven. I love what occurred, but what about you? You are dying in this remote <laughs> yeah, I village. A, great time. <laughs> a, a, a guy by the name of Randy transports you. Uh, how many miles away to a I hospital? It was out, six, about 16 hours away. I mean, to a you hospital. were dying. Yes, I had been given about 24 hours to live. Um, and this precious man found me, drove me 16 hours to a hospital got to the hospital, they said basically um, it was a miracle that I was alive. All my organs had shut down, I had severe dehydration and um, was very sick. I needed, they said I needed an instant surgery and um, I was just like, no way, you know, and, and I just started, something rose up inside of me and, and said, no, I know that my God can heal me. I've seen God move, I've seen him heal. He loves me. He's a pastor gave you an encouraging prophecy yeah. too that helped. Tell it's me true. about that. As I was lying in the hospital, hooked up to all these machines, miserable, in pain, um, so incredible. This man walks into my room, this Kenyan pastor. I've never seen him before. He introduces himself and says, um, you, know, you don't know who I am, but the Lord woke my wife and I up last night and told us to pray for you and told me to come and give you a word. And I'm going, thank you. I want it right now. <laughs> and, um, and he said, you know, the word is very simple. He said this, and he just pointed to me and my condition, and he said, God wants me to remind you, this right here, this is about spiritual promotion. This is about gaining authority. And it was the exact words God had told me and I'd written in my journal before I left. I love it when I God know. does something so like fun. that. He knew I needed that because... I mean, here you are. Okay, you're, but you're still, you're encouraged but dying in yes. the hospital. <laughs> so my and... heart was better. <laughs> my body wasn't better yet. Um, but it did give me the faith just to go, you know what? 
I know God can do this. I'm going to press in. And I, I know that in the middle of difficulties, choosing faith and choosing to believe his promises is that thing that pushes you through and gives you authority. And it's the thing that breaks you okay. in. Okay. So, well, uh, this good friend of yours shows up in a dream. Tell yes. me about him. Um, I, I fall asleep. And um, while I'm asleep, I have the most incredible encounter. I don't know how to explain it other than it was like the most beautiful kindest light and I knew it was Jesus walked into my hospital room and he took the back of his hand and he said be still and he just cut me right down the middle with his hand and pulled my skin open and I was kind of honestly it was so real it was like watching surgery on TV I was like this is gross you know but it was it was so incredible and one by one he just began to massage my organs and he cleaned me out and did all this stuff and then he took my skin and closed it back up in his hand he had my exact skin color it was like clay or mud and he put it on top of me and I was thinking oh my gosh I'm not gonna have a scar and and I was awakened in that moment and honestly when I woke up I was still in total pain oh no I know I didn't feel any <laughs> different and I was like no and I just had to make a choice and I said I know God's character God is not the kind of God that would tease me I have nothing to lose at this point so I have to believe I'm healed so I just was like I'm healed I'm healed and and my doctor was in the room thought I was totally crazy and was like, you're not healed, you're actually dying, you know, and, but what happened was when I said, I'm healed, it was like supernatural strength came into my body. And it was when I made that agreement with who he is, and I couldn't stop. I was just like, I'm healed, I'm healed. I just kept <laughs> screaming because it was like, every time I said it, I was feeling better. I mean, it had been 10 days of extremely ill, unable to eat. So when you walk out of that hospital, what does the staff and doctors oh, say I mean, or think? So many of the doctors and the nurses were just in tears. They were so moved. Many of them um, received Jesus as their savior because it was, it was. How could you not believe that Jesus could heal? How, I mean, they saw. They saw I was dying. They saw. They retested everything. All my normals. My, my my levels were completely normal. My organs were functioning just fine. It was medically undefined, and so all the credit went to God. It was incredible, and I was completely healed. Uh, you think that's incredible? Wait till you find out how Jennifer brings a few suitcases of clothing to Africa and it, the clothing keeps multiplying. She gives away the clothes and more clothes are in the suitcase. I mean, that, that sounds like what I read about in the Bible. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this word. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural!